Before we get started learning the fundamentals of creating parts, assemblies, and drawings, I'd like to take a few minutes to introduce some important areas of the inventor interface that you will be interacting with during the remainder of this course. This is the interface for creating a part model, but it is also very similar to the interface for assemblies and drawings as well. An area that remains the same between all three interfaces is this area on the right, called the design window. This is your working space where you graphically interact with your parts, assemblies, or drawings. The other window that remains constant between all inventor document types is the area on the left called the browser. This area will display all of the different sketches and features that go into creating the final part geometry, as well as the origin and default reference planes in 3D space. Most parts are created using a combination of sketches and features that are built on top of one another, so the browser is where each of these are shown after they're created. The browser will have slightly different information for assemblies and drawings, but in all cases, this window is a method to interact with the items shown in the design window. We'll go into much greater detail of how to use both of these areas throughout the course. Next, focus your attention to this area above the design window. Inventor organizes its commands, features, and tools in a ribbon-style interface, similar to Microsoft Office documents like Word or Excel. The different tabs organize the commands and functions based on the type of category they fall into. Each of the tabs are organized into something called panels, which groups similar tools together. Inventor does a great job of showing you tools that are relevant to what you're working on. As you can imagine, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of different functions available in the software. The interface will change to show you the tools you need based on what you're doing. For example, if I start a new sketch, the interface changes to show the Sketch tab on the ribbon, along with all of the different sketch tools. If you need a little help from Inventor about a particular tool, just hover your cursor over it for a moment, and the pop-up gives you some more details. Also, notice the text that appears in parenthesis next to the tool. If you like using hotkeys, you'll find the default hotkeys for many of the functions here in this window. We'll stay away from hotkeys in this course for the sake of clarity, but once you get more familiar with the tools you use all the time in Inventor, hotkeys can make you a much faster user. Finally, take a look at the status bar on the bottom of the screen. If you're ever unsure about what input Inventor needs from you for the function you're working with, it will show up here. If you have multiple Inventor files open, you can toggle between them using these tabs. You can split the window to see them at the same time, or cascade the windows. On the right side of the status bar, there's some other interesting info. If you're in a sketch, Inventor tells you how many dimensions or constraints you need to fully constrain your sketch. It also tells you the number of occurrences, or in other words, the number of parts showing on the screen. This will be more relevant when we talk about assemblies. The other number tells you how many Inventor files you have open. And if you're using a 32-bit OS, it will show you a capacity meter, which tells you how much memory is being used by the files open in Inventor. The final area on the screen that I want to mention is the area on the right of the design window. This cube and toolbar provide different ways of zooming, panning, and rotating in the model.